Welcome to PokerCast episode 29, and the official start of the Heart Gold Soul Silver on analysis. The conclusion of UK Nationals two weeks ago means that we are now fully concerned about testing everything Heart Gold Soul Silver onwards. There are so many deck ideas out there, and with no tournaments until Worlds, PokerCast will be taking a turn towards more deck analysis based episodes. But before I get to the first deck analysis of the new format, let's go over some very relevant news. We finally have the official news. Most of us guessed this would happen, but now it's been announced straight from Pokemon on Wednesday. We will be having a Heart Gold Soul Silver onwards format as of the 1st of July. This doesn't affect the UK in any way, since tournaments here are finished, but it does affect Canada, the US, and Worlds. This is a very large shift in the game, with some nationals very close to the official rotation date, but luckily, most of you have been preparing since the possible rotation was announced a while back. Personally, I think this is great news for us and everyone else, as I'm sure the rest of you agree. We all expected Pokemon to change the format when the initial idea was announced a while ago, but this confirmation just makes everything set in stone and keep all of you still awaiting nationals on the straight and narrow. And that's pretty much all the news I wanted to go over, since it's the news we've all been waiting for, for a while now. So it's on to the first episode of the Heart Gold Soul Silver era. This week, I was stuck for choice in deciding which deck to analyse, seeing as there are many that have been brought to light in the community and during my testing so far. In the end, I went for a deck that has been getting a lot of hype, and features one of the new legendary Pokemon. I'll tell you now that it isn't Reshiram, so I'm going to be talking about Zekrom. The first thing that immediately jumps out at you about Zekrom is that it's a basic with a huge 130 HP. One of, if not the largest HP found on a basic Pokemon, certainly in this new format. This means that you have no way of getting donked by anything turn 1, even though donks will see a fair decrease in this format anyway. This bulky HP means that Zekrom will be on the field for a while, with only a few Pokemon able to one-shot it. So we're off to a good start, with a very impressive HP, but we're going to need some great attacks to go with that to make it worthy of a main attacker status, and I'm sure you won't be disappointed. Zekrom features two attacks, both key to the strategy of the deck. The first is called Outrage, and for two energy, or a double colourless, you can be doing 20 base damage, plus 10 more for each damage counter already on Zekrom. This sounds okay for now, but with a massive HP, this attack comes in very useful when you're close to getting KO'd, since you can hit for some very heavy damage for a low energy cost. It gets even more useful when we move on to its second attack. Bolt Strike costs 2 Lightning and a Colourless to use, and does a very impressive 120 damage at the cost of doing 40 damage to yourself. Now the 40 damage isn't the best, but after a Bolt Strike the previous turn, you can be doing 60 damage at least without Rage, not including the damage you take the next turn, making Zekrom's HP even more useful. Zekrom's energy cost is where it can take a while to set up, seeing as it isn't compatible with Double Colourless, meaning that it will take 3 turns to manually attach the energy needed. So this is where we need to improve if we're going to make a decent deck out of this, and that's where Pachirisu and Shaman come in, giving the deck the ZPS nickname. Let's look at Pachirisu first, coming from the set Call of Legends. It features 60 HP, what you'd expect for a basic, along with a poker power and a single attack. The attack is okay, and can get the donk if used in conjunction with the poker power, but shouldn't really be used unless it's for that reason, or netting a final KO. Where Pachirisu shines is its poker power self-generation. This power allows you to attach 2 lightning energy from your hand onto Pachirisu when you play it from your hand and onto your bench. This is pretty good, giving you an extra 2 energy attachments for your turn, but considering Zekrom is your main attacker, you're going to need a way of getting that energy off of Pachirisu and onto Zekrom. This comes in the form of Shaman from Unleashed, featuring 70 HP and sports a single poker power and attack. The attack is never going to be used in this deck, so let's skip straight to the power. Celebration Wind comes into effect when you play Shaman from your hand and onto your bench, and allows you to move as many energy as you like to any of your other Pokemon. Hopefully now you're seeing the synergy between the three Pokemon I've mentioned, since Shaman can move the energy you've just placed onto the field of Pachirisu onto Zekrom. This still means that you haven't used your attachment for the turn, allowing you to attach a third energy to Zekrom and start using Bolt Strike as soon as turn 1. This little engine gives you a very quick and aggressive deck, which can set up on turn 1 the majority of the time. 
The only time this doesn't happen is when you struggle to get 3 energy into your hand, seeing as it's the part of the deck that's hardest to search out consistently. Following the main attacker and support for Zekrom comes the starter of the deck. This is a speed based deck, so you're going to need a starter that can help to give you the hand you need when luck doesn't work out. Clefer is the most popular starter choice at the minute since it has a very useful attack called Eek, which allows you to shuffle your hand in and draw 6 cards. Perfect if you've drawn badly or have a low hand. Not to mention, it also has a handy free retreat. Not only does it act like Pont, but Clefer automatically falls asleep, negating any damage done to it next turn from your opponent's attacks if you flip tails between turns. This makes Clefer a form of wall for a few turns to let you set up or being asleep for just your opponent's turn will help you out considerably. With the added draw power this card can give you in a speed deck, it seems to be the most appropriate choice as a starter. Now hopefully you have a good grasp of how the attacker and support are used in the deck to get powered up and attacking for high damage as soon as possible, so now we need some trainers and supporters to help us further towards that goal. I won't go into specific counts of these cards since we're still testing this deck out, so I'll give you an idea of what trainers should be included and then the number of them should be up to you. First we have Pokemon Collector, seen as a staple in all decks, but that isn't necessarily the case in the new format. However, this deck does need them since every Pokemon you're running, excluding any techs, will be basic. This means that you have a good source of search power to get the Pokemon you need for the situation. Next is Jewel Ball, probably considered more of a staple at the moment than Collector since it acts similarly to it. Searching out more of your basics on potentially turn 1 means that you can get your strategy going as soon as possible. This card is played along with Collector seeing as it's a trainer that can be used multiple times per turn. Pokemon Communication, the third staple of Heart Guard Soul Silver on, allows you to net the Pokemon you need if the correct ones just aren't in your hand. Being able to switch these Pokemon allows for further searchability of your attackers and or techs. Reversal is another card you should consider in this deck. Since Zekrom will be doing 120 damage per turn, your opponent won't have any time to set up if they bring up their unprepared stage 1s, so they will leave them on the bench until they're ready to take you on. This card eliminates this strategy on your opponent's part, and even though based on a coin flip, hitting heads on this card at the right time can severely damage your opponent's setup making it hard for them to make a comeback. Definitely consider fitting this into your list, but for a second, it does remind you of how powerful Pokemon Catcher will be when released, but that's for another episode. I'm gonna clump these next few cards into one choice, since the one that makes it into your list will serve a similar purpose, but player style really helps towards your decision. The three cards I'm talking about are Pont, Professor Juniper and Sage's Training. These cards are all used to help with the speed of the deck since you can refresh your hand or get an entirely new one, netting key cards you may need for the turn. Pont is a great way to refresh if you have cards in your hand you may need to use later, whereas Professor Juniper allows you to get rid of what you don't need now and draw 7 fresh cards. Sage's training has been an interesting one, but I've only done limited testing with it so far. This card allows you to look at the top 5 cards of your deck, choose who to keep and discard the rest. This may seem like a rough deal, but the next card you should include makes this card a much more appealing choice. Junkarm has great synergy with Sage's training, since you can discard trainers during your 2 card choice with the option to still get them back if you need them later in the game. This may seem like an overextension a little bit, but it is a surprisingly effective way of getting out of a tight situation. Seeing the next 5 cards of your deck gets you ahead in the game, also allowing you to effectively get rid of cards you don't need now but with Junkarm allowing you to get those back if you do. These two have a great little engine between them, so try it out in your decks, not just this one, to get a little more speed in your builds. Energy Retrieval is also an option in this deck, since when Zekrom gets KO'd, you will be losing 3 of your deck's energy. Using Energy Retrieval means that you can grab 2 of those straight back into your hand and reuse them pretty quickly through Pachirisu. This adds to the recovery of the deck, with a little more speed in there too. Other options in the deck include interviewers questions to grab those energy faster, flower shop lady to save those energy and get back key pokemon before performing a search, seeker or super scoop up to reuse shaman and pachirisu during your turn and revive could be an option too to get back those zekroms as soon as possible. Overall, zekrom has a very strong early game presence 
I've done a quick playthrough of it for you just to show you how quickly it can set up. Just click below to go to the video. If you decided to watch the video, then you'll have seen Zekrom can be a very effective way to get quick KOs on your opponent's Pokemon before they have any chance to evolve or set up anything to respond, even getting the Donk in some situations. The weaknesses of the deck include the double fighting weakness and the way the deck loses power the longer the game goes on for. The fighting weakness will be an issue since Donphan and Machamp will be played in this format, posing an issue for your main attacker, getting KO'd by one Earthquake if you use Bolt Strike the previous turn. To solve this, Zekrom can actually beat Donphan if the pressure is applied early on, or adding in a small tech can help you to stall for a while before returning the KO on a troublesome Donphan. A lot of people have been using Yanmega Prime, a very splashable tech to deal with Donphan, since it has a very useful resistance to it and can attack for zero energy. This is a good choice and can even give you the option of adding Judge to the list so that you can attack a lot more frequently with it, as well as adding a bit of disruption. Another, more creative tech for the deck could be Slamorot from Black and White. We've been testing this card recently in Zekrom to counter Donphan since it hits for double weakness and its attack has an entirely colourless cost. 3 energy for 120 damage on a Donphan, due to Exoskeleton, is very effective and the 3 attachments aren't difficult to get since that's what the main name of the deck is anyway. This option will take up a fair bit more space in your deck though, so numbers will have to be cut to fit this in, but a decent attack against Donphan, along with a very nice ability, means that you should try this out if Donphan is giving you too much trouble. The fizzling out during the mid to late game stages is just where the deck shows its weakness a little bit. Since you're going for a very aggressive start, you will run into a bit of trouble if the game is going on too long. As you're adding damage to yourself with Bolt Strike, it gives your opponent a bit less work to do to get the KO, meaning that if they get an attacker going, you could be in some trouble. Saying that though, this deck has a pretty decent recovery after a KO, through the reuse of Shamans and Pachirisu, but you can only recover a few times. So in summary, this deck has very strong early game with the ability to get strong early KOs along with some decent recovery if things don't go too well, albeit a limited one. The speed of this deck is a tough one to rival if you can get your list consistent enough to do this the majority of the time. Pair that with a high early damage output and beefy HP and you've got a tough deck to take down. For those of you in the US and anyone else experiencing a Heart Gold Soul Silver onwards nationals, this deck will be a solid choice, but you will need to test it thoroughly to get a consistent list, as well as trying to cover the weaknesses without taking away too much from the main strategy. That's all I have for analysis this week and I hope you found the first of the new format helpful. Next week we'll feature another deck analysis and if you're interested in seeing a specific deck then please comment below saying which one you want to see. Just before I go, I just wanted to highlight two things that I've been working on this week. The first is that my deck surgery will be returning as of next week, but in the new Heart Gold Soul Silver on format. Since the format is very fresh and new, I should get more varied deck lists through PMs so that I can go over as many decks as possible, getting them fixed in time for nationals. So if you have a deck list you want looking at, please send me them via YouTube PM with the title Deck Surgery, followed by the name and hopefully yours will get picked next week. The second thing I wanted to bring to your attention is the relaunch of my website. The last one I took down because I felt it was a bit difficult to maintain and had a bit too much on it than I liked, so I made a new one which is much simpler and easier for me to keep updated. This new site is much more of a blog style and will feature everything that I can't fit into a video such as card of the days, testing results, tournament reports and extra deck surgeries. My plan is to do two surgeries a week, one via a video and another through a written article on my new site. This means I can get more surgeries done, which means more help for you guys, and maybe I'll be able to do more than two, depending on time. Please make sure you check out the link below for even more info about the blog, and I hope you like the new site. And please keep visiting it, as I will be updating often. That's all I have for you this week. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week for the next episode of Poker Class.